Perfect. Great. Great. All right. Fantastic. Perfect. All right. Three, two, Thanks, one. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. And today we're gonna to be talking about chest rigs, kind of going a little bit in depth on the different types and the different kinds of chest rig options that are out there. But before we get started, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out, help us to uh, continue to push out content on this channel. And that really does uh, do a lot for us. So, uh, disclaimer. Yeah, no disclaimer here. Um, none of these products, for the exception of uh, our own product that we sell on our website. Ghost rig, ghost map pouch. Uh, we're just going to cover a bunch of great companies that we yeah. that we utilize. Um, actually, we're not even probably going to really dive into the companies that much. It's more of the different types of setups that there are to choose from out there. Yeah. Uh, there's a massive amount of market now. We're lucky uh, in today's society to have tons of companies to choose yeah. from when it comes yeah. to buying chest rigs. Yeah. So. So really no disclaimer. Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, kind of what we're going to be covering today, we're going to talk about the purpose of the chest rig, also the different types of rigs. There's so many different chest rig options out there, so we're going to kind of break down those types and what makes them unique. Uh, we'll talk about the individual types of chest rigs, and then also some things to consider when you're looking for a chest rig. Uh, and then we'll kind of finish off with some of our recommended items or like extra accessories that you may want to have on your chest rig, some things that we wear and that may help you out with what your loadout's going to be. So, um, purpose. What is the purpose of a chest rig? To carry mags, to carry medical, to carry... Carry stuff. Carry stuff, carry whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I think right now, especially, I think earlier on kind of in the industry, like within like the early 2000s, it was real big on plate carriers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, can you kind of talk a little bit about that type of phase, how we've kind of gone from plate carriers now to... Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, that, that was a big thing, especially actually being, you know, in the retail industry where we would just get people that would come in constantly off the street, like, hey, I want a vest, like, mm. you know, especially newer newer individuals into, uh, especially, actually, even during COVID, yeah. that was a massive thing, too. People coming in, like, hey, I just want a vest, like, they're thinking, uh, and you kind of break it down, it's, okay, well, what are you talking about when you need a vest? They're actually talking about a plate carrier. Mm. So you've seen that, that, that push that movement, um, everyone going and getting their plates and getting their uh, their, their carriers mm -hmm. so much to to now like okay well I need I need a little bit more than that right. um, I need I need some comfort I need some ability to carry some stuff mm -hmm. uh, so actually for myself I re remember back then too I just ran a slick carrier plate carrier mm -hmm. completely slick I can't even I, I think you were running a spirit of systems. Maybe, maybe, no, it was even it was earlier. That. That, it was yeah. even earlier than that. It was like um, like U.S. Palm. Oh, yeah, yeah, U.S. Palm or something like that. It's it was just idea. actually just a plate. Um, a plate slip, bag. Yeah. Yeah, plate bag. That's yeah. that's all it was. And then I ended up with a 
uh, man, I don't even know, maybe like a chai com rig mm -hmm. or something yeah. that I just threw over top of it, and that was I was good to go. Like, yeah. That was that was a setup. That's that's honestly all I knew. Yeah. So. Like, yeah, I think now, now we have so many choices. Oh, a hundred percent. It's a, definitely a buyer's market, and I think that now we're seeing this huge shift within the industry and the community where people are now starting to put a lot more emphasis on sustainment. And that's where chest rigs kind of come into play. At the end of the day, it's just something to hold your stuff. Um, one of the things that with plate carriers is it's heavy, especially if you get yep. like, guys are buying, buying steel plates and trying to navigate what plates to buy. The more light that it's going to be, the more expensive it's most of the time gonna be. Um, so guys were looking for a lighter option. And it's funny is because we're kind of coming back full circle. If you look back in like the early 90s and the, mm -hmm. before the G-Watt, chest rigs were like, that's what you wore. Yeah. And then we went to the plate carrier phase and now we're back into chest rigs again. So um, with, with the purpose of the chest rig, you're looking for something that is pretty much gonna carry your stuff, help you be sustained. Um, and also it's gonna help with maneuverability. Like maneuverability, especially when we do running gun all the time, yeah. it is such a huge, a huge thing. Getting into tire places, the ability yeah. to, the, 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 the ease of actually even just kind of removing the source if you need to, mm, uh, yeah. to get into some tighter places, taking it off, um, different types of rigs uh, for, for your ability to lay down in a prone position if you need to. Right. Just a, just a, a massive amount of variety uh, to set yourself up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that you can also, we've got those smaller chest rigs now, like the micro type chest rigs. So now you have like chest rigs being worn for like EDC, I can yep. throw into a go bag. Um, so there's a huge amount of stuff that you can kind of fill uh, as far as all your gaps within your sustainment that the chest rig can provide you that option. One of the big things also is I remember and, like on and it's it's also a, too it's just a it's a it, it literally is a Lego system. <laughs> yeah. So you can start with something yeah. and then continue to build on it. Um, now, I mean, if you take and go back to our typical normal Chicom rigs mm -hmm. and then you know um, our old London Bridge rigs and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. like that, like uh, yeah, they were kind of preset. Yeah. GP pouches on them carry a bunch of mags. Mm -hmm. You know, double stack mags. Um, but now you know, like for instance, like taking taking like a rig like the Ghost or like something like uh, the Spiritus or yeah. Um, man, um, what is uh, Spade 7? Um, you got Spade yeah, 7. Yeah, Spade 7. Yeah, Spade yeah. 7. A few other guys that are out there um, making stuff. It is it is a Lego system. Yeah. Like you can just set these things up however you... Yeah. And you can tear it down and change it. Yeah, it's so... Please. It's so... What do you call it? It's so accessorizable. Yeah. If that even... Is even, yeah, it even maybe, a word? Probably. Yeah. In our book, yes. Yeah, it's a word. There's, there's a definition on it. <laughs> yeah. so we make up words all the time. Yeah, so we add You guys are actually used to that now. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, as far as also like wearing a ruck, remember that that outing that you yeah, you and yeah. Chris and guys did, oh, man. and you guys had to wear a pack. How would it, how miserable it would it have been if you had to wear a plate carrier instead of a yeah? It, it would have been absolutely miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so Eric actually just surprised me that particular day with with uh, with with a ruck, and it's like, hey, you're gonna go on a ruck. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And he's like, what what do you got in your truck? And I'm like, okay. So I went to truck. Well, it happened to be the heaviest amount of junk that I could possibly <laughs> have with me that day, for the exception that I I. I was able to sneak away. I had a plate carrier in there, but yeah. I didn't know that I did, so I didn't wear the plate carrier. But I had a full rig uh, and a Mark 12. Mm, uh, nice, good for that choice. Ruck, so um, it was fun. Yeah, but definitely the chest rig did kind of come in as the champion as far as comfort while wearing that ruck. Yeah. Um, and that's also gonna be something that you wanna have to consider whenever we talk about things to consider later on in this video about how to pick the right rig for your needs. Um, but a big thing if, if for me, any type of gear, whether it's chest rigs, helmets, any, any rig whatsoever is comfort is king for me. Yeah. Um, if you're not comfortable, you're not thinking about the mission set or your tasks at hand or what you're doing, you're thinking, when can I get this thing off of me? So comfort is a massive, massive thing that I look for when I'm looking at a rig. Yeah. So there's there's three different types of rigs. Um, we'll, we'll just kind of jump into that. Yeah, I mean, so let's just start with your micro rig. Mm. So that is that is something very common. That's actually probably what I recommend for most people to grab. Right. Uh, it's very expandable. Yeah. You can start with something that just holds three mags, mm -hmm. roughly, and then expand on it. So it's a great rig to start with. Uh, it's actually one of the, uh, when I decided to actually get something legit that was just not surplus or something mm -hmm. like that, that was manufactured by, you know, a little bit more modern technology and a little bit of thought process by yeah. guys that, you know, have worn this stuff for, for job purposes. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually what I started with, was a micro rig. Yeah. Um, actually, the Spiritus, yeah. um, one, of, one of their rigs. 
So yeah, let's, let's micro ribs. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as the micro ribs, I remember when you first started running that, it would also, you had the Spiritus Systems plate carrier. Yep. So he was able to run his micro rig. That was rig. another reason why I actually yes. chose the micro yeah. rig, uh, the smaller stuff like that, uh, is, is the ability with ease to actually just throw it on my plate carrier. Yeah. So just, just you know, hook it in. Yeah. Um, with your buckles and re ready to go. It also was kind of cost savings for you as well because yep. you didn't have to buy a whole chest rig and a whole plate carrier yep. set up. You could kind of combine them and save a little bit of money, but you had all the capability. Yeah, I could. I, I had that ability to to throw a dangler on the bottom that mm -hmm. gave me some type of GP pouch without expanding around my waistline. Right. Um, and then, you know, just turn around and slap that entire thing with the dangler on it over to my plate carrier yeah. and it was just like just just simple um not over complicating things it was easy to keep in my truck mm -hmm. kept kept my harness uh i ran an h harness on it at yeah. that particular point in time um that was kind of before we really had the xh harness yeah. from wiseman company so mm -hmm. i just ran a standard h harness yeah so. and that and that was a great great chest rig when spirit system came out with that it kind of revolutionized the chest rig market and honestly i think was the first one of the very first ones that kind of pioneered the way of having a chest rig as your plate carrier placard so that was kind of nice um, the cool thing also is they have inserts for those. So if you have 5.56 five, mags or you want to run like submachine gun mags, you could run those inserts. Um, actually, Wiseman Company actually sells like a Kydex style yeah, uh, 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 insert. Uh, Tigris or? Tigris. Tigris. Tetris. Tetris. <laughs> they sell Tetris. Uh, they got those mag inserts to kind of make them a little bit more tactile um, and a little bit more hard. Yep. Um, but the cool thing about the Spiritus, the, the, those micro rigs, um, micro rigs in general, just not Spiritus. Not just Spiritus. But Spiritus but micro obviously rigs makes a great product. Exactly. So, I mean, you, you'll probably hear us mention Spiritus a lot because yeah. we do, uh, they do make a good product. Yeah. So. And they had, uh, it's, <clears throat> They had a lot of like extra pouches, but what was cool about that is the ability actually kind of ollie cart to build it out yeah. however you want. Like yes. when you're going down, okay, what you know, what front flap do I want? Do mm -hmm. I want a full front flap, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that I you know want something that gives me a little bit more storage, right? Or do I want a half flap or something like yeah. that that gives me the ability to you know kind of configure it based on my scenario and my setup as far as what I did. Right. Um, just just like I said earlier, it's, it truly is a Lego system. Yeah. And the micro chest rig is is very versatile yeah what were some of the edc items that you would put in your chest rig if you were putting in a go bag yeah so i kind of actually uh, my micro rig as far as edc uh always some type of um additional lighting right. you know like an additional flashlight right. uh, was was is a big thing if i could shove any if i had the ability um without running a whole lot of gp pouches on it or anything like that additional medical right you know uh, actually i even substituted a mag pouch one time mm. for medical nice uh ran two mags yeah. in it and then shoved uh, medical gauze yeah. down into the other um, and then just used uh, shock cord to bungee a TQ to it. Okay, nice. Trying to keep this as far as EDC like in my truck as, as, as small as possible where I can, you know, if you, I have a Tacoma, if everyone that has a Tacoma out there, you'll know like you can fold down that back seat right. and there's like that little cubby hole right, right, right on the back side of it on the Gen 3s and um, it would fit in there relatively easy with like a 12 and a half inch rifle. Mm -hmm. So 12 five rifle with that rig, a couple of ma a mag in the gun, two mags in there, and I would in the other mag pouch I would sl throw some uh, extra um, extra medical in yeah. there. Shot cord a um, a TQ to it. Flashlight, a little snack actually. Actually, mm -hmm. kind of you know you gotta have little a little bit sustainment. You know, a little you know? bit of sustainment, just yeah. like a little snack, like a little protein bar, something yeah, yeah. like that. Something that uh, that doesn't uh, that ages well. Mm. From yeah. being in the vehicle. I also remember like very at that simple, time, not, a, not a lot. No, and, not a lot. and actually to supplement your mags because yep. you were only running two. I remember you running two forty round mags. Yeah, actually two forty. So you could correct, run a little exactly. bit extra. Yep. Two forty round mags in there, and yep. then a and then a typical uh, thirty in the uh, yeah. a regular capacity thirty in the uh, yeah. in the gun. So I mean, like the micro style chest rigs are very scalable. Our Ghost placard is actually very scalable, and we'll talk about the Ghost a little bit more. But that's a good option with those micro style rigs. Is as a placard, it can also be scalable and it's also great for EDC. Um, so the next type of rig that we're going to talk about is the split rig. And yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, it is a great rig. Yeah. And there's actually two different types of versions that we've seen. An EDC style was very slim, yep. almost like you could wear it underneath a jacket or something very, like that. Uh, very forming to your body, kind yes. of elastic. Yeah. Uh, like a belly band style. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like you would have like a belly band holster or something like that mm -hmm. for your for your pistol. Yeah. So, yep. And also a heavier rig. So like um, I know like Tactical Taylor, um, London Bridge, some of those older companies were making those split style rigs and even Spiritus Systems is now mm -hmm. making a, 
a, uh, a split rig that's more heavier sustainment. So it has more bigger general purpose pouches already sewn into it. But what this split rig allows you to do is it allows you to split the chest rig so you wear it like a vest. Yep. And now if I want to land the prone, one of the big things we always have, if you land the prone, you have a lot of stuff on the front, you're kind of laying kind of high off the ground. So being able to unbuckle that and lay flat on your belly is a mm -hmm. nice comfort. And I'm going to tell you too, one of the nice things about split rig is, is the ease of putting it on. Yeah. Super because you're, you're basically putting it on like a jacket yeah. or like a coat or something right. like that. Yeah. So the split rig actually re kind of replaced my EDC rig. Mm. Uh, the micro yeah so they kind of kind of fell into this a little bit of the same category yeah, for, yeah. for me i went with a smaller split rig right uh, a little lighter weight uh something that you could conceal if i needed to kind of like a button-down shirt like i'm having today mm. buying a little bit larger size and kind of throw it over top if nice. it's you know the, the two days of winter that we get here in florida i can <laughs> yeah. throw a jacket over top of it if i needed to um but the also the how fast you can get into a split right. rig you can get into a split rig relatively pretty quick so yeah. um and like eric said they're very low profile for being able to get into lower positions like prone right. and stuff. So. some of the things as far as like positionals sh like if you're shooting in different positions you want to talk real quick about some of the courses that we offer that kind of teach you that yeah stuff? so we do our especially in our scope carbine class yeah. um so a first off one of the best ways to support us besides liking and subscribing is is coming out and training with us yeah so uh, we do a scope carbine class it's actually probably my favorite class to teach mm -hmm. uh it's what uh what i enjoy the most is a rifle with some glass on it and yeah. pushing the pushing the limits of 556 five, basically um and we do a lot of different types of positional shooting and getting into those prone positions or sometimes just just very unorthodox around barricades yeah a chest rig can get hung up on things oh yeah having that ability to kind of open it up or or to take it off relatively pretty quick mm -hmm. is a nice feature to yeah. have yeah. um and you know you're gonna spend you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to if you have the ability to do so to shoot more accurately at distance is trying to ground yourself trying to get as close to the ground as you possibly can yeah um and that's definitely something that we go over in our class um trying to build those more stable positions yeah and adding something like a piece of equipment adding a layer like a chest rig mm -hmm. there can definitely complicate things, uh, complicate things, not complement, <laughs> uh, complicate things. Um, but at the same time, if you set the rig up properly, like uh, for say like a split rig for mm -hmm. your DMR rig yeah. or your SPR rig or your scope carbine or your GPR, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, <clears throat> so many different names nowadays for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you can you can complement your setup, yeah. uh, your rifle. So. Yeah, and I think also you know with like our general purpose rifle class where it's a lot of you know a hundred yards and in manipulating the rifle yeah. and learning good good uh, form, um, building good form uh, in with that rifle or with that pistol like in our baseline red dot pistol class, learning all that form first and then adding in the implements adding the and adding in the gear and then training with that and becoming proficient and that's how you also figure out what's working what's not mm -hmm. working how many times did we move pouches yep. around like exactly. hey this rubs me raw i've got a blister here now mm -hmm. this is uncomfortable uh, it seems good and that's really up, but... honestly the nice thing about the modern rigs yeah is that ability and i know we're kind of jumping ahead of ourselves a mm -hmm. little bit here but the ability to kind of change it almost on the fly yeah uh, pretty quick if yeah. i if i'm if i'm moving around this thing and i'm starting to get hot spots yeah because i got a pouch somewhere or something right. like that i can i can adjust that versus a lot of your older rigs or just they did the job. Yeah. They carried things, but they were probably there. There were certain pouches that were just in the way. Yeah. So. And it was sewn in, so you couldn't really do and anything. Sometimes about the pouches it. <laughs> were too like they were just so large. Yeah. Like just for carrying so much stuff. Now I have that ability. Okay, well I'm a right-handed dominant shooter, mm. so I want to carry a smaller pouch on my right side. Uh, I have that ability to do so, but on my left side over here, I'm really not doing a whole lot. Right. I can go with a bigger pouch to yeah. carry some big stuff. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I think the other thing is knowing where all of training with your gear enough to know where everything is at without looking so like in our night vision our ghost fighter night vision alpha and bravo class um, we do have rentals that course is sponsored by advanced night vision so if you want to try night vision and without before you buy it that's a great course to come to but you definitely need to know where all your stuff's at because you're gonna have to try to access it without feeling or w without looking so you have to kind of go by feel and memorization about where your stuff's at on your gear and you can only do that if you train with your kit and actually know and have it on versus just wearing it in front of the mirror in the living room yeah with the door shut and the window blinds closed. <laughs> um, and then also kind of when you're talking about medical, we have the Guardian Casualty Response Course uh, with Todd, our medical instructor. And 
knowing what medical stuff to have in your chest rig, where to have that stuff, where it's accessible and easy yep. to identify, those are all important things. But like Roy said earlier, the best way to help support us is to take a class with us and train with us. We love to meet, and it's nice, super humbling <laughs> meeting all of our yeah. supporters and, and, and as students. So, um, all right, so we're going into the heavy chest rig. This is kind of where like the older, the older recon style yep. guys would, would run these rigs. And that was for a long periods of sustainment. So if I'm going out on a multi-day, you know, excursion, a mission or whatever, I want to carry a lot of stuff. Um, the way that they would think about things as far as wearing stuff on their chest rig was if I have to ditch my ruck mm -hmm. and most of the time you would. So say for example, if I have to put my ruck at an ORP or like a, uh, a place where I'm going to hold up and then I'm going to go check something out. It might take me a couple hours. I might be gone for a day. Can I sustain what I have just on my rig without my rucksack full of my stuff? Can I survive long enough without my rucksack and then get back to it whenever I need to? But do I have enough on me? So a heavier chest rig is going to have more of those sewn in pouches or it'll be like a micro placard with mm -hmm. all those additional wings and pouches yep. sewn in or uh, added onto it. So that's something that you really want to make sure, especially on a heavy rig, if it's not comfortable, you're going to notice. As soon as yes, you start you putting are. weight in that thing, you're going to really notice. And that's where things like the HX harness from Wise Men and Lunar, yep. it has so much support on the shoulders. Even our H harness that comes with the Ghost has a lot of good, it's yeah, really flat, not a lot of bunch of padding. You're really going to start to find um, types of harnesses that, that mm. fit your rig. That's where you're really going to notice it. Like, yeah. uh, generally speaking, on a light rig, you can pretty much go with anything. Yeah. You can go with you, X, It's pretty forgiving. X, yeah, it's very yeah. forgiving. Uh, we get in these heavy rigs, you're, you're going to notice it for yeah. sure. Um, set, setting it up, having all your straps and having everything adjusted absolutely perfect. Yeah. Is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, so. and also with my with my straps, and I know for Roy, the big thing that we look for is one, we tape up all of our excess webbing, but we also look at where are those buckles on yeah. that strap. We, we utilize a buddy system when it comes to setting up our rigs, and yeah. I highly suggest that you you know if you have if you have somebody, mm -hmm. um, you know in your community or somebody that you shoot with that you train with, and you're kind of setting up your rig, or maybe you got your rig set up right now. And you know you kind of maneuver around the house. You take it to the range and stuff like that. Utilize it sometimes. Try to take note on where those buckles are at. Are yeah. they are they pushing on something? Are they rubbing on something? Because if you're just at the range, running a you know you're out there doing one R ones because it looks super freaking cool. Um, super freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is that you're doing, whatever kind yeah. of drills, and you're getting hot spots just mm. doing that. If you're starting to move around with this, especially in that heavy rig. Yeah. Especially uh, and, with a ruck on as yeah, well. Yeah. And that's where me and Eric definitely use that buddy system as far as trying to set yourself up. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll size it based off of what I feel like is going to fit me right. Right. And Eric's going to come by and, and make adjustments and kind of tighten me up, loosen mm -hmm. me up in certain areas um, and uh, and tape up, uh, take, tape up some of those hot spots. Yeah. So. And then we'll go for a walk and see, okay, what works, what doesn't, what needs to be moved, what needs to be kept the same. Yeah. A lot of those heavy rigs will also carry a crap ton of ammo. So like if I need to go out for a long period of time, I also need to sustain myself. If I get into a hot, you know, firefight or whatever, can I break, you know, have enough firepower to break away from that and get mm -hmm. away? Um, so that's something else that you want to think about with those heavy rigs, a lot of ammo to sustain. Um, if you can kind of supplement, if you have like a micro rig and you have it scaled out, um, putting extra ammo in your rucksack. And then once you, if you expend those mags on your chest rig, going back in when you have a moment, pulling that extra ammo from your rucksack and putting mm -hmm. it, refilling your chest rig back up. So they're yeah. just things to consider. Um, but what is something to consider about a heavy rig too, as far as like, uh, I, I know for my, is when I, it, not necessarily, yes, it's, it's my heavy rig, but, and it's made to carry a lot of stuff, but mm -hmm. sometimes we'll see and you see a lot with plate carriers, but mm -hmm. you'll even see it with these full on, you know, recce rigs or, you know, long term uh, sustainment or short term sustainment rigs um, is how far people will start to really expand these things yeah. out and how big they get them. Yeah. Um, you really start to cut in your maneuverability. Yeah. And so. that's something for me if I'm looking at a heavy rig. So like my parachuter gear yeah. rig that I have is set up and sometimes like. I understand if I have a lot of stuff, I have to have this stuff. Like yeah. I need this to sustain. And I may not have the choice of maneuverability. Like yeah. I may have to just have Correct. a lot of crap on so me. So understanding yeah. that when you, you know, uh, that what the purpose is that. Correct. Um, yeah. Because we'll see guys that take their heavy rig and they start to really download it yeah. to where it is. That's my point behind this mm -hmm. is we'll, we'll see them. that will mm -hmm. be really loaded out. It's cutting down on some maneuverability, but the whole point behind it is the, that ability to carry that stuff. Right. And they're out there running these rigs that have the ability to carry 
carry, you know, six, eight, seven, you know, magazines, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and they're downloading them to three mags across, yeah. you know, kind of like the Ghost. We'll see a lot of guys that just run three mags yeah. in the Ghost, which is fine. But it's meant to carry six. But it's meant to carry six. Yeah. This is designed to, it's designed to be the base, the heart and soul right. for you to build out your, your heavy rig. Yeah. Um, yeah. is what it's designed for. The other thing on the flip side of that coin, Roy, is we also see people with micro rigs or small rigs and try to, try to overload them. overload them, <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah, and then you're busting at the seams. Yeah. Um, and you're really, that's where you start to see these micro rigs and they get the really big pouches like they have them like yeah. all underneath their arms and they're just kind of in the way. Things, yeah, so. and that's something whenever you're shopping around or wherever you're trying something out, some things to consider. Um, you know, having maybe a micro rig for your EDC, your placard on your plate carrier, and then having a heavy you rig. can probably not have have enough chest rigs. What do we have? Like, I don't even know. I know. <laughs> I know. Ben Wynn Wiseman Company definitely has probably the most. Yeah. In, ever, anyone out of our men, he probably has more chest rigs than most women have purses and shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he loves chest rigs. Yeah. And he has a ton of different setups. Uh, yeah. He's actually very good at setting them up too. Yeah. Um, but but I know we have a lot. Yeah. We've got. We have a lot. I know we've got several. We've yeah. got several. Yeah. And. Uh, but it's 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 all it's all good because we end up figuring out like I know I I trend towards my ghost rig and my parachuter gear rig, um, so my ghost is kind of like my intermediate to small scalable and also medium is just how I have it set up. But my parachuter gear has a ton of pouches on it and it's more mm -hmm. for sustainment. Yeah. So um, it just it's never bad. We live in a market today where we have the ability and the luxury of living in this great country where we have options. Yeah, and you always so. have the ability to get something and turn around and sell it. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you don't exactly. like it, so. yeah, I can't um, tell you how many pieces of gear that I've gotten rid of. So some things to consider when we are when we are buying something, um, like we said earlier, comfort compatibility is also another one. Mm -hmm. um, how am I able to? Does this product work with other companies' products? Um, and then versatility. I know there are some chest rigs out there where they have a pouch sewn onto the chest rig and it's only meant for one thing. And it's like, well, what if I don't need to carry that one thing? What if I want to put something else different in there? So maybe some more like general sized or thought out pouches that allow you to fit multiple things in one pouch. Yeah. Um, and then also our buckle placement as well as our uh, hot spot. So on our, on our straps, kind of like we talked about earlier, kind of goes in with the uh, that comfort. And then also our um, purpose-driven design. Um, so did they really think about what they're trying to do whenever they put this rig together? Did, was there some actual thought going behind it? Yeah, or did they just throw a bunch of pouches on there for you to carry some stuff? And figure basically. it out, so figure it out. Figure, figure yeah. it out, so. Um, so, all right, kind of going for our last bullet point here, some recommended uh, items. Um, so when we look at accessories, the biggest thing that we look at is like our pouches that we can add on. So yep. something that's like Molly, yeah, or has the ability to have molly on pouches, Gen a good general purpose pouch goes a mm -hmm. long way. Yep. Um, you can just fit a ton of stuff into it. Um, what are some other accessories I, that you like? Yeah, I mean, as far as general purpose pouches, uh, that, that, that fare well with pretty much almost any rig out there. Take a, take a look at the spirit of stuff. Yep. They have a ton of different ones to choose mm -hmm. from, uh, all different sizes. Uh, other accessories, my pro honestly, probably one of my favorite, uh, and I run this on my belt, mm -hmm. I run it on my chest rigs, I keep one in my vehicle. Um, this is actually probably one of my favorite pieces of accessory. This is yeah. the J Tactical Solutions uh, TQ pouch. Yep. This thing is freaking awesome. Yeah. I love it. Uh, you'll find this on every rig that I have. We also have it on our website. Yep. It was going to be on our yep. website. So you can either hit J Tactical Solutions up or, or, or barrelandhatchet.com. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a great piece of kit. Another thing that's really cool. Obviously, shout out to us, but the Barrel and Hatchet Ghost Matte Pouch. Um, really love this thing. A lot of chest rigs come in without having an actual pouch for your maps yep. or your, your, your notebooks or things to write things down. So this is a removable. It can go onto any placard type chest rig. You can even put it on a plate carrier or a placard on your yep. plate carrier. And it just is pretty much, it has Velcro on the inside, allows you to be able to access, put stuff in there. It also fits three mags. Mm -hmm. um, it has Velcro on the back and the front. And it also, what are some other ways we've seen this thing used? Man, um, outside, talking about the mags real quick. Yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, actually pretty cool. cool. Uh, I've seen a few guys do this now with it, and uh, I know you did it, Eric, but behind something like the Ghost um, or the, um, what is your big rig? Parachuter gear. Parachuter gear. gear. Yeah. <laughs> Three more mags. <laughs> yeah. On the back of, so we got a total of nine mags yeah. right here in the middle of our chest right yeah. now. So, uh, but other ways, um, actually, I have one of these in my truck. Mm-hmm 
right on the floorboard next to the center console in my Tacoma. Uh, the Velcro actually just sticks to the carpet. Uh, one of uh, one of our buddies actually told us that about this. He's like, hey, did you know? He picked up a ghost map pouch. He's like, hey, you know it actually sticks to the carpet right there. So now I have one inside my truck uh, and I can just kind of use it. Uh, looks like a big pencil bag. Yeah. Basically, like you would carry in elementary school. Yeah, so. and the Velcro on the inside allows you to get like organizers yeah. to be able to stick in there. So what I have inside mine, I actually have an organizer inside of it. Um, yeah. I keep a range finder in my truck, not because for any kind of tactical purposes whatsoever, yeah. but because we utilize range finders so All much. The time. And I'm constantly like, we're, we're reaching or grabbing for something. <laughs> yeah. So like, I just have one in my truck. Yeah. So I have, I, have a, uh, I have a range finder in there. I have uh, some, you know, pins and mm -hmm. extra markers and just, you know, typical normal admin type things that I would need in my truck. Uh, actually including um, documentation sometimes. Yeah. That's a good place to keep documentation. Yeah. So like you were talking about maps and yeah. notepads and stuff like that. So yeah. that's a, a good piece of kit, good piece of accessory to add. Um, any, any way of carrying a tourniquet pouch, uh, that can be shot cord. Yeah. Just adding some shot cord to your rig if it doesn't have it on it, kind of mm -hmm. bungeeing it through. Uh, the Ghost Rig does have tons of shot cord on it mm -hmm. that you can kind of set up. Uh, I've actually ran a TQ on the side yep. right here. Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys cord. do that. Yeah. So that's the easy way. Uh, we got our GP pouches that yep. we can add to it. That's mm -hmm. great. A, a solid harness. Yes. Yes. A lot of rigs will come with just some type of baseline harness. Um, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's like an afterthought. Yep, like, and oh, then a lot it. of times it's an afterthought. Yeah. Um, so picking up a solid harness um, is going to make a massive difference yeah. when it comes to your comfort. Yeah, I mean, so one cool thing that I want to point out about the Ghost is the fact that we made it inter-adaptable. The biggest thing is obviously it's scalable, but can work with other companies' products. So like the Spirit of Systems Thing uh, 1 and Thing 2, I think it's the only Thing 2 that they have now. Um, but the expander wings on the Lunar Concepts uh, uh, they actually work really well with the Ghost, and you can add GP pouches by adding yep. those expander wings on J there. J Tactical Solutions expander wings yep. also work really, really well. Yep. And so the biggest thing is obviously doing your research, figuring out what works best for you, but you can't figure that out unless you go train. Um, so make sure you hit up your, you know, your training time and actually get out there. Work those reps clean without any implements, and then slowly add those things in and figure out what the heck yep. you need, you yep. know? Um, Figure out what those spots are that, uh, you know, the hot spots that may be rubbing on you mm. or the, you know, what pouches in the way of your draw stroke on your pistol. Yeah. Where is your sling getting hung up in your, right. you know, in your chest rig? There's a, there's a lot of variables that come into play. So many times in classes where we'll see people just, just, they're, they're either one or two things or their equipment is either really, really set up well because yeah. they spent the time or it's the complete opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. And it's set up so bad that they're fumbling with it the entire time yeah. that they just come over to us and say, hey, do you think I should take this off and remove it? It's working it? against And them. I feel, because yeah. we, we preach training so much and training with your kit so much, but it it's working against them so right. much that it's like, okay, well, let's remove this. Mm -hmm. That way we can go back and take a look at it and help you kind of set it up the right way. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that Speaking we, of, before yeah. you check out our Instagram account, yeah, yeah check out freaking uh, Phase Line. Uh, pretty sick cup. Amazing artist. Amazing artist. Pretty sweet uh, shirt. Um, man, his his artwork is, if you like our photos, you'll love his artwork. You'll love his artwork. Yeah, so. So, yeah go check out Phase Line. Yeah, his, go, I, his IG page is pretty awesome. Go throw him some love and also check our IG page out as well. Also, you can check out our Spotify channel. We have the Hatchet Cast podcast where we interview uh, guests only. We talk about mindset and training. And then also Rumble. All the videos that are on YouTube are on Rumble and more. How do you find Rumble? I think you just type in rumble.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, just go Is there. It free? It's free. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, make sure you guys go out and train. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you haven't already, uh, any experiences that you have, comment below. And uh, no, we'll see you until next time. We'll see, we'll see you. Until we'll see next you time. until next time. We'll see you. Just next keep looking time. at us. Yes. All right. All right. See you. <laughs>